Hey everybody, good morning. How is everybody? Well, this is a live that's a little bit earlier than I'm used to going live with you guys. And I know, I know, <clears throat> you're used to seeing AZ bring you some drama, right? But today, I just want to share what I'm passionate about, right? Which is what I like to do on my channel. I don't intend for it to always be something with juicy drama involved. I intend for my purpose of this channel is to share what I'm passionate about, right? And a lot of you might not know this, and a lot of you might very well know this. I have this innate fascination with our universe. I always have, um, especially since, you know, I met my homeboy, Leon, um, in 1994, right? <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't meet any aliens, but I felt, I feel like what I was looking at in the sky definitely possibly could have contained some, right? This is why my channel has things like Fire Up the Craft. It has our homie Leon here, right? This is this is Leon the Gangsta. If you if you're familiar with my channel, you know all about Leon, right? Leon is, you know, somebody is a staple with my channel, right? There's a reason. I believe in the Leons of the world. Leon, I believe in you. <laughs> I believe we're not alone out here. We can't be alone. If we are to believe the universe is infinite, we cannot be alone. I just don't think so. I don't believe it. I've always spent many nights of my life staring up at the sky and literally being like, what else is out there? There's got to be more. We can't be alone here. Right, Leon? Right? With your thug life glasses. If you're on the replay, thanks for watching. Um, now, guys, thanks for showing up in the chat. I know this isn't um, a stuff a lot of people are interested in. You know, some of my friends in real life, they either like it or they go, eh, it's just some stars, right? I don't I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's so much more than that. Um, now, yesterday, just a brief recap of yesterday before we start watching this together, right? <clears throat> yesterday, sleepy Joe Biden fell asleep, took a nap or some shit. I don't know. Kamala was late. I don't know. But he was late and I was not happy with him. <laughs> Yesterday, they showed the first uh, image, and a lot of people were underwhelmed with the image. Let me show it to you real quick. Um, I, I, found, I found another aspect of the image they showed yesterday that really gives it more perspective. I think you'll appreciate this a little more, or at least I hope so. Um, let's see. This right here, let me hit play on it real quick. Hold on. Can you guys hear me? I didn't. I can't even remember if I hit the freaking voice button or not. But uh, sorry, guys. It got stuck. Let me try it again. It is amazing. It's me. Ama it's audio is good. Thank you. All right. I don't know how anybody can be underwhelmed by these images. I mean, we've never seen this far back, right? The universe is thirteen point eight billion years old. 13.8 billion. What we're going to see today, 13 billion years back. I don't know. The image ain't really working. But let me put up, let me bring up, uh, 
I have to refresh the NASA thing, but until then, uh, let me bring up the guy talking. Now, I was I was a little disappointed in humanity yesterday. Let me just continue with my little speech since the video won't load. Um, I was a little disappointed because everybody seemed to be think. I, I th this is what I think. We've all seen those beautiful images of like the uh, the nebula and stuff, right? We've seen those colorful images of like you know all the pretty colors, and we're like, wow, that's so beautiful. The Hubble showed us that, right? And everybody was has been told this whole time, oh, this new telescope is a hundred times better than the Hubble. So we're, we're gonna be like, we was thinking like we're gonna see Hubble colorful things times a hundred, right? But when everybody got the photo, they saw a deep space photo, which is a lot different than the pretty colorful photos you see, right? That deep space photo was still moving nonetheless, in my opinion, right? Hey Poodlerific. <clears throat> Have you done the Greer E, the Greer CE5 meditation to make alien contact? No, I have not. I have not. I don't think, listen, listen, Poolerific, hear me out on this, okay? <laughs> I love meditations and I definitely believe in aliens. But as far as me contacting them, I think that, um, I think I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I've heard enough, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is a little funny today. I've heard enough like abduction stories to know that you know um i'm good I'm, i believe in my heart that aliens are out there i don't think i really need to talk to them you know what i'm saying poodlerific <laughs> i'm good um from what i understand they, there isn't much of a, a two-way conversation going on they they telepathy they telep telepathically excuse me tell you yo we're not gonna hurt you we're just gonna take your brain cells and you know poke around in your eyeballs and you know, stick you with some stuff, relax, you know, and you just lay on the cold table. I've heard a million of those, you know. Do I believe some of them are real? Yup. Definitely do. I definitely do. I think I think that there is, and tell me, tell me how you guys feel about this. I think that there are civilizations out there that are far, far more advanced than us. Do you guys believe in that? People think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you. I just feel it in my soul. I think that there are civilizations out there. For example, let me let me give you a little example of why I believe that. I have another interest other than the universe, and it's the pyramids, the Great Pyramids, okay? The pyramids, you know, we were taught in school, at least I was anyways, I don't know what you guys were taught. We were taught that the pyramids were made by like a levy mechanical, you know, situation, right? <laughs> by a levy. Ah, uh, yeah, no. I don't believe that, and a lot of other people don't believe it either. That would take, that would just not make any sense. Furthermore, the sandstone they used was 300 miles away. So tell me how, back in the Egyptian days, right? Tell me how, oh, this is before a wheel and axle was invented too, by the way. It's not like they they just drove them shits, uh, you know, 300 miles on a fucking tractor trailer to, you know, the Great Pyramid location. Anyways, it's always interests me, and I've watched all the theories of how they were built, and the only thing that actually makes sense to me, you guys are going to laugh. I've talked about this before, right? I've talked about um, the raw material. It's called the raw material, and it's a, um, a channeling of the advanced civilization raw, okay? And I know, I'm, I know I'm sounding crazy. Just stay with me, okay? Stay with me. Your girl ain't lost her marbles. Just hand me out, all right? <laughs> They channel this advanced civilization, and the things that they say make more sense to me than anything I've ever heard ever. Now, I was brought up, you know, um, in Massachusetts, especially so the Boston. A lot of us are brought up um, to go to CCD, to, go, you know, I made my communion, I was baptized, you know, I'm right with the Lord, all that stuff, uh, <laughs> which I still believe in that, but I, I believe... I don't believe per se in what I was taught. Do I believe there's someone greater than me? But do I believe the way that it was written? I don't really know. I think that every interpretation of what is God, you know, is basically the same give or take, right? I think that in this advanced civilization, the way that they explained how they made the pyramids made more sense to me than anything I've ever heard ever. And not only about the pyramids, everything they said about everything, about the history of us, the history of the universe, the history of time. 
made more sense to me than anything I've ever read. So <clears throat> in the raw material, it is like the coolest story. I'm telling you guys, I should just do um, a video on the pyramid from the raw material and how they did it, right? So anyways, the advanced civilization, right? They sought to explain how they did it. They literally used energy, right? Because they used intention, they used energy, and it made makes a lot of sense. I'm telling you, they used crystals, okay? You know what I'm saying? Power, dude. They, if you focus on something, we only use, you guys got to know this, we only use like a certain percentage of our brain. The rest of it's just there. Like, we're, okay, maybe we could unlock that shit. Maybe there's more, you know? I think that the advanced civilizations definitely helped out with the pyramids. And the way they explain it is the advanced civilizations came and they showed humanity these amazing things like how to move stuff, um, how to make the pyramids, how to how to just do great shit. And guess what happened, y'all? Civilization went and abused their power as typical humans do. And the, the advanced civilization was like, yo, we're out of here. You guys are crazy. You're abusing your power. Maybe this was a mistake and they bounced. <laughs> and I can't say to blame them. They're like, this was a bad idea. Y'all ain't ready for it, you know? You ain't ready for this knowledge yet. And they left. Because they, they want to, you know, the way they operate, this advanced civilization is through love and light. So they come to the earth. They're like, hey, let me show you a thing or two through love and light. Y'all out here abusing your power. This was a big, bad idea. See you later. They bounced, right? I'm telling you, makes sense to me. <laughs> Humans ruin everything. They really do, though. They really do. Okay? So, anyways. Let me see if I can load that image here. Another cool thing too, as soon as so, anyways, this uh, this telescope has been thirty years in the making. Think about that for a second. The smartest people in the world have been working on this thing for thirty years. Now, yesterday, President Biden made it seem like that this was just an American thing. He was like, "America ingenuity, Amer American this, American that." It's not just America working on this thing. I don't know if he didn't take his meds yesterday, whatever, but, like, it's not just America. This was a worldwide effort between, you know, several different countries. So that was kind of, like, rude how he was just making it an American thing, which, I mean, it's freaking Biden. You know what I mean? He was a weirdo yesterday. There was a part in his presentation yesterday that was super awkward. I don't know if you guys caught it. Like I said, he was late. And uh, I did not appreciate that. I did not. I've been waiting a long time for this shit. I'm, I remember being in high school or just about graduating high school and hearing about this telescope and how we were going to see way back in time. And I swear to God, at least every five years or so, up until recently, I would check on the status of it. I'd be like, yo, is this thing done yet? Are we done yet? Can we see it now? You know? Um, so I've been super interested in it. I'm registered through the freaking James Webb, whatever, on the NASA website. I get the emails and stuff. Like, when I tell you this stuff intrigues me, it really does. It really does. So, uh, oh, you got a meeting, Shyla? That's all right. So anyways, yeah. So Biden shows up. <laughs> he, they show the image. And he says something dumb, of course. He says, like, oh, I wonder what the press is like in those other places. And it's just awkward silence. I think this dude on the screen right now, I think he was there. It was, like, really awkward. <laughs> like, nobody said anything, and then they just Biden stopped talking, and I think it ended. It was so awkward. Oh, freaking Biden. You can't take that dude nowhere. You can't take him nowhere. The people in the comments, in the live co comments, were killing me. He was like, 13 billion years ago, Biden's up there saying the people in the comments were like, yeah, that's about how old you are, Biden. <laughs> just, they were just making fun of a poor guy. He, he's, a, uh, he's a helpless uh, he's a helpless man. He, he can't function without his uh, handler, Kamala, you know what I'm saying? And listen, this is not a political thing. I'm not a Trumper. I don't, I don't like any of the politicians. I know they're all liars. You know what I'm saying? They're all just liars. It, it's just a, it's just a, it's just who can lie better. That's all, that's all politicians are about. You know what I mean? That's it. I ain't team nobody. I'm team truth, and they all lie. So, you know, how about that? <laughs> so let me uh, let's get this. Uh, let me play with this, guys. This is actually interesting. This was playing before I went live, and I want to. Um, I don't want to miss anything cool. So it does start like 10:30. They're gonna show the images. So we got a good 15 minutes. I'll pop in here and there and talk and stuff, you know. Um, and we'll just go from there. Like this is kind of like a. We're just winging it today, guys. We're just winging it, all right? That's what we're doing. Okay. But the reward 
is worth the risk. All right, let's see. And this is proof of that. It represents the largest international space science program. It collaborates internationally. Now, Michelle, I'm going to turn it back over to you uh, to share messages from our international partners. Thank you. The mission would not be as successful as it is today without the teamwork and contributions from our mission partners, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. We are pleased to share with you a special video message from ESA's Director General, Dr. Joseph Oshbacher and their Director of Science, Gunta Hazinga. The Chen Webb Space Telescope is such a fantastic opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity which we have here. And uh, we are so excited, uh, both Gunther and myself, uh, on this first data release. Uh, it will really change the understanding of our universe. But uh, before I hand over to Gunther, just one word. This is a lot of uh, international cooperation. The partnership we have with, with NASA is uh, outstanding. It's, uh, it's really uh, exciting but really fantastic and also with uh, CSA, the Canadian Space Agency, and uh, this is more than science, it's also a symbol of international partnership. But Günther, a bit more about the Chance Web Space Telescope, what this means. Thank you very much, Joseph. Yeah, this is the day that we have all been waiting for for so long and now, now it's happening. Uh, you know, James Webb is a fantastic machine and its um, infrared eyes are three times sharper than the Hubble Space Telescope and they're 100 times more sensitive. So with these infrared eyes, you can peer into dark, obscured regions in our universe. You can look at the very first phases of the, the universe after the Big Bang. You can look at planets in our own solar system and in around other stars. And it is indeed a once in a lifetime chance, almost like the, the moon landing for astronomy. And it will actually feed many, many careers. It has already shaped uh, a whole new generation of scientists and this will continue. It's a masterpiece for international cooperation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch of boring old guys talking about mumbo jumbo. Anyways, you know what really interests me too? Because when you think about it, right, they send this, they send this super expensive. Can you hear me now, guys? I know I was on mute for a second. You can hear me now, right? I'm sure I'm good now, I think, anyways. Um, so yeah, they send it up there and uh People are like, well, how long, how can it stay up there? How does it have enough gas? How does it have enough this? How does it, how do you stay up there for freaking 20 years, right? So we have this spot. It's like a sweet spot. Oh, in Otis Otis it's called the L2 Lorange point, right? And you can just stay on cruise control up there, right? Like one, the way, the way, the way it's set up, guys, listen, in technology, you know, I'm not big, good with the big words and stuff, okay? Let me just dumb this down on my level for you, Okay. The L2 Lorange point puts you on cruise control and you kind of just you let the uh the force of the gravity just carry you around kind of thing. So you circle, right? You hardly use any fuel at all. So that's super cool, right? And I know that this fall they're gonna release the biggest rocket, I think it was, that's ever been out there too. So now listen, back in the day, since so let's let's talk about this while we have a few minutes. Do you remember it actually still happens? It ain't even a new thing, right? Everybody likes to talk about how uh, the moon landing wasn't real, right? You guys have heard that before, right? That it was just like a hoax or whatever. Uh, I ain't going to lie. Back in the day, maybe when I was fresh out of high school, I was like, oh, maybe maybe people are right, right? Because it shows the flag waving and there's no wind on the fucking, you know, the moon and stuff like that. So I kind of fed into it a little bit, but I, I, I don't think it's true anymore, right? I don't. I don't think that that was fake. I think that they really went there, right? I do. I do. Why haven't we been back, though? <laughs> That's kind of weird, right? But I think we're going back. They're going to start something this fall, and they're going to go to Mars, too. They're going to go to Mars. Do you know that, like, we as a society still don't know everything about the inner core of our Earth? Like, we think we know, right? But there's still some things we don't understand about the center of our entire Earth, which is crazy if you think about it. We go to uh, the moon, and we're going to Mars and stuff, but there's still some things they don't even understand about our own planet, which is kind of crazy. 
What do you guys think of Jeff Bezos and how he has that blue origin and how you can go up and out of space, right? If you haven't checked out the blue origin thing, it's really cool, right? I can't imagine being that rich where you can just be like, yeah, today I'm going to um, head up to the uh, outer space and just float around with no gravity and then come back to Earth all within 10 minutes. All within 10 minutes, okay? He's got this little freaking bubble thing that's connected to a rocket, right? You go up. And 10 minutes later, so you spend about three minutes with no gravity up in the air, right? He even brought William Shatner with him. <laughs> he brought William Shatner with him. But they went up there, they float around, they come back down with a parachute. A freaking parachute. The little bubble comes back down in the parachute. It's crazy. So you can buy a ticket to the Blue Horizon, right? It's only like, I don't know, freaking a lot of money. I don't even know the exact number. It's millions of dollars. It only takes like five people at once and it only goes like every couple months or some shit. But can you imagine being Jeff Be having Jeff Bezos money? Being like, where do you want to go today, honey? Oh, you know, let's just go to outer space. It's crazy, right? Sounds like a roller coaster from hell. I know. I know. Like, put it this way, you guys. If Jeff Bezos was your homie and he came up to you and he was like, hey, do you want to go on the Blue Horizon for free? You don't even need to pay me. Would you guys go? Would you Would you go? Would you? That sounds, that sounds extraordinarily terrifying. When I say that, I mean, like, it sounds super freaking awesome, but it's also super freaking terrifying. Now, like, I like roller coasters, and I like the universe, but I don't know if I'm willing to, uh, you know, go there. I don't know. I don't know if I would. I would love to. Don't get me wrong, but that's a huge risk that I don't know if I'm willing to take, <laughs> especially from the dude from Amazon. I mean, Jeff Jeff Bezos, I know you got money and all, but like, uh, you ain't NASA, you know, <laughs> you ain't, you ain't, uh, you ain't the International Space Station and shit. I'd rather get up there with Elon than freaking him. At least Elon's smart. You know, Jeff Bezos is just rich. Well, he's obviously smart too, but not as smart as Elon. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of Elon... He ain't buying Twitter now or something? I don't know. That dude is wishy-washy. He, he's, you know, Twitter is supposed to be like half bots or something, you guys. More than half. They're all bots. But anyways, he's mad about it. He don't want to buy Twitter no more. Maybe he should just buy his own Blue Horizon and take us all out there. I don't know. I don't know if I'd go. A lot of you were saying no. Nope, nope, not worth the risk. Oh, Marie says yes. Marie, Marie, you would go? You would go? I'd have to think about it for a long time. I don't know. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, right? So only one of you said you would go. <laughs> Marie, I don't know, man. I don't know. I would love to, but it just sounds like, I don't know, I, I got a kid, you know? <laughs> when, you, when you have to go risk your life, it ain't just about you, you know? So I don't know. It sounds cool, though. It really does. You'd get sick there, bro? <laughs> You know what I noticed lately? Like, the older I get, like, the more I get motion sick. I never used to have that problem. Ever. Ever. You would go, Camilla? You would? I'm kind of torn about it. I'm more on the no side than the yes side, though. Out, out of fear. That's just straight up being honest with you. I, I'd be scared that, like, you know, the parachute didn't deploy on the way down or something blew up on the way up. Because let, let's, like, remember the Challenger? I think I was, like, five years old when that thing blew up right? That was kind of uh, terrifying. And you know what's crazy? <laughs> my favorite show, I've told you guys this before, my favorite show when I was a kid was Punky Brewster. I was Punky Brewster. I am Punky Brewster. I embody everything Punky Brewster. The color, the colors, you know what I'm saying? I I envied that chick, okay? Even though she had no mom and she was just with her dad, had to live with some old guy, I envied her because I just liked her style, right? I was like, yo, Punky Rooster is lit. <laughs> so anyways, in a Punky Brewster episode, thank you, Poodle Riffic. Some say there are structures and aliens on the dark side. Ooh, some do say that. You're right. You're right. <clears throat> there was a Punky Brewster. Thank you, Poodle Riffic. There was a Punky Brewster episode. I don't know if you guys remember this. About the Challenger and how it blew up. That shit was moving. I think I cried as a kid. I think it made me sad. I can't even believe they touched that. They were willing to do that in a kid show. 
you know nowadays they get canceled for that shit they'd be like how dare you talk reality with my child <laughs> but anyways that that was terrifying even as a five-year-old because i can remember being really young this is before you know i saw the ufo in 1994 okay before that being super intrigued with everything out of space and stuff like that right and thinking like how sad that was that uh that blew up like that right you know what's amazing to me I hate to say it like this, but I'm amazed that shit has not happened again, right? Like, think of all the the fuel in it takes just to get up there, the blast it takes. That's the scary part, right? Oh, there's a full moon tonight? No kidding. You guys remember that, though? You remember the Challenger thing? Yeah, that was sad, right? Whoa, Debra Young says, a dear friend's brother believes with all his heart and soul he was abducted by aliens. Debra, I believe him. I do. You know, here's the thing when it comes to stuff like this. Th first and foremost, there's a lot of crazy people out in the world, right, who say crazy things. Whether it's because they're lying, whether it's because they have a gen a, gen uh, a definite, you know, mental problem, whatever. Um, it doesn't matter. There's people, there's, there's stories out there for every situation that are not true, right? And I think that they ruin it for the ones that are telling the truth, right? Like um, Bob Lazar, for example. Like, I believe that guy, that he worked in some kind of facility on anti-gravity. He, as far as I'm concerned, he's telling the truth, you know? And I believe that certain people definitely have been. Let me tell you something. What I saw in 1994 defied all laws of gravity it defied everything i ever knew it didn't make any noise the way it moved was crazy like this is why i can never let it go and i talk about it all the time because it did it didn't make sense right you don't forget stuff like that you just don't you do not forget where you were standing what 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 it was like and how it made no sense and i believe your friend Deborah. i do i do i love those kind of stories i do <clears throat> Hello, just saying. Anyways, Shermar has a pretty cool uh, story, too, about um, a UFO. And you start talking UFOs, and some people are like, yeah, you're crazy. Like, they won't even listen to you. Like, they, they shut you down, right? Like, I tell the story. We only have a couple minutes, so they show the images literally, like, I think it's, like, what, four, three minutes or some shit. I remember after me and my mom and my cousin and my aunt, we saw that shit in the sky, right? I remember going, having to go to bed that night being terrified. We had just moved my bedroom around, and my bed was right near the window. And I remember being scared to move. Like, I remember having my blankets pulled all the way up to under my chin and just laying there, like, stiff. And, like, I was hot, but I wouldn't move the blankets. I was scared to take the blankets off. I was, like, under there sweating. I was like, yo, if I move, they're going to know I'm in here, and they're going to come take me because I know too much. I seen their spacecraft. They're going to come for me. They're going to erase my memory. I just know it, right? I was terrified. Meanwhile, while I was laying there, my mom was out in the living room with my dad, and she was telling him what happened. And he was like, I could tell by his tone of voice that, like, he didn't believe her. He was like, yeah, sure, okay, yeah, aliens. Uh. And I remember being so sad and angry, like, dad, please just believe her, because when we go missing, you need to know where we are. You need to help save us. Ah. I remember being like really distraught that he wasn't believing what we saw because i was like yo when they take me he ain't gonna know where to look you know like that shit affects you it, it stays with you right you don't forget things like that stacy says hey stacy remember the show sightings <gasps> oh sightings yes stacy i remember that oh my god i forgot about that i had been watching sightings too yep and unsolved mysteries i was reading goosebump books about ufos and shit <laughs> i love that stuff I'm glad you said that. I forgot about that show. That's so cool. Thanks for thanks for the flash. You're always good for a uh, flash from the past, Stacey. So, Mama Bubble says, my best friend and I saw a UFO when we were on a double date. We were at the sand dunes. Ooh, that's awesome. <laughs> Tell us again what you say in your contact experience. Like what I say. Hmm. I don't really understand your question. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, what was weird about that experience, though, like, as we were all looking up and it was moving in ways that it shouldn't have been able to move, especially silently, 
like my mom told me to go get my coat we were going to follow it out to the woods because it moved behind us you know, my mom still doesn't understand why the hell she she thinks she was like hypnotized i'll tell you again after poodle riffic all right because i got to put the show on but i will tell the story again in a minute okay all right guys so let me um bring this up here let's uh let's stop playing it because i don't want to miss nothing here give me one second <laughs> Actually, let's see. After we look at these images, I'll tell my, my story again. For shizzle. All right. It just says coming up, okay. <laughs> They have the worst hold music. <laughs> they really do. This is it. This is the day we get the first science images back from the James Webb Space Telescope. And you've got a front row seat to the cosmos. This world can only be described as a celebration for everyone on Earth. So think about this. Light from the earliest days of the universe has been traveling to us for billions of years. Just over the last few weeks, we've captured some of that light with a telescope that sees the universe in an entirely new way. And today we share the very first results. So longtime space fans are going to know who this is. This is Dr. John Mather. He's the senior project scientist for the Webb Telescope and a Nobel Prize winner. And John, I couldn't be happier to be here with you today. Thank you. It's a thrill to be here for this very special day. How are you feeling? I am thrilled and I'm relieved because you know when you start something this big, you know there's always a possibility. It might not work. It <laughs> did work. We are so proud. And you've been on this project for a very long time, right? Yeah, I started in 1995. We had just finished measuring the Big Bang. We measured it with the Cosmic Background Explorer satellite that we built right here at Goddard. And we measured the spectrum. We measured there are hot and cold spots in the Big Bang. So we said, now we know it all, how it all got started. But then what happened after that? So then I got a call from NASA headquarters. Would I like to work on this new telescope that's going to help answer those questions? What happened after the Big Bang? How did the galaxies grow? How did the first black holes grow? What happened all the way from there to here? So this is our time machine, and I just wanted to be part of it. I am so thrilled that we got a chance to do it. You know, one of the things that I remember you saying, and this is kind of amazing, that you know, after you win the Nobel Prize, you thought that this mission was the most important thing to work on. Absolutely. It's the next question. After you know how it started, what happened then? And, you know, when suddenly we now have the technology to do it. We didn't have 50 years ago. We didn't have the technology 25 years ago, even when we started this. We had to invent things along the way, so we did that. And here it is. Well, thank you. We'll be back to you in just a moment. So at the moment, we're going to talk about the way that Webb is a completely new way to explore the universe. So today, the mission releases its first science images and gives wings to the dreams of so many people who worked so hard for so long to make this possible. For everyone on Earth, this is your telescope. This is the largest, most powerful observatory ever put into space. It's the product of thousands of people working for more than two decades. This is a, a mission that's singularly focused on the biggest questions in science. So the following phrase is often used too easily, but today actually does mark the dawn of a new era. Today, the web mission is open for scientific business, and this is just the beginning. The best is yet to come. So John, one of the things you told me about is that you really wanna make sure there are, are some people that get thanked, people that put a huge amount of effort into this. Absolutely. Uh, our current project manager, Bill Oakes, uh, took the project from a time of trouble when we were, didn't exactly know how we were going to get this to work and got it all the way to the end. Here it is. It is working. And it's because of Bill made this worldwide team, 20,000 people around the world were involved in making this thing all work. And Bill has been there every day making sure that it would happen. So another uh, special person is Senator Barbara Mikulski. She saved our telescope and she saved the telescope before us. She made sure after the Hubble telescope was launched and it was not in focus, that we would go up and fix it. She made sure that happened. When the Webb telescope needed more resources, she made sure we could get that. So Barbara, we thank you. <laughs> well, it is such an honor to be with you, Jay. I mean, it's been a pleasure to be working with you through this whole thing. Thank you so much. Congratulations and go Webb. Thank you. <laughs> so this broadcast, much like Every part of this mission is a partnership. 
On our journey to explore distant places in space, we've been joined by intrepid travelers from around the globe. We have so many extraordinary collaborators. So let's check in with our partners who will be sharing the stage with us today as we reveal Webb's five first science, science images. From, from the European Space Agency. There is a lag and it's not me, it's happening on their uh, thing because I can see people in their comments saying there's a lag. So here I am thinking it's me, but it's actually them. How, how yo, maybe so many people are watching it that they freaking can't even, gonna break the internet yeah right no not a lot of people care about this stuff and i don't know why it, it's like how can you not find this interesting right how can you not find this interesting you guys you know, some of these people out here will will uh notice if katie joy plucked the wrong eyebrow here but they don't give a shit about the universe <laughs> it's just the weirdest thing to me but let me find a different channel because i hate lags man oh it gives me like problem here it gives me like um anxiety when there's a lag i'm like people aren't gonna watch this with me all right, let's try, hmm. I'm probably gonna get copy written wherever I go, but. See today all the way in India. This one looks a little better so far anyways. We'll be back to them later, yes? Great to wave to you, hi, wonderful. <laughs> and we're also, we also have a warm welcome now in Portland, Oregon. So we have them feed from Portland. A bit dark, but I see everybody there, hello Portland. Or an auditorium, I see. Okay, okay. The next, we're going to go off to Milan, Italy. So, afternoon in Italy. Do we have the feed from Italy? A bit dark. Bit I see everybody there. Hello, Portland. Vermont. So, is this Vermont? Hello, Vermont. Hi, everybody. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for being part of this today. Okay, going even a little bit further afield, we have Natanya, Israel. Hello. Hello, Israel. Yay. Hey. Really nice to see you guys. Okay, just one more for now. Uh, I, I see people like giving me hugs. <laughs> okay, we also have Vancouver, Canada. Hey, Vancouver. Hi. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful to have all these people with you. So right across from the campus from me, there's also a huge watch party taking place with members of the web team. So the wonderful thing is that they actually are people that have worked on the mission and they are part of our NASA funny family. <laughs> so hello. Hello, web team. There they are. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people I recognize there. So it's incredibly important to me personally, and also to all of us at NASA, that the universe belongs to everyone. And we are thrilled to share this day with fans everywhere around the world. We'll say hello to some more later in our broadcast. So now it's time to start the main event. What you'll see over the next hour will be a collection of images newly processed by the web science team. Only a tiny handful of experts have seen the images so far. And I can tell you that we have been so excited to unwrap them for everyone. We will be releasing each image in turn in real time. As soon as you see it on this broadcast, it will be available for download on the internet. On the screen below, you can see a timeline showing where we are in the show and what's coming up next. And by the end of the show, all five images will be available to everyone. So hopefully you can tell I'm excited. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, we're going to release the first image right here at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, Maryland, and we're just outside of Washington, D.C. NASA Goddard is home to the project office of the Webb Telescope, and the observatory portion of the telescope, the, the mirrors and the science instruments, were integrated and tested here before launch. So for many of us, including myself, seeing Webb come together bit by bit right in front of our eyes was an emotional and very inspiring experience. So it's kind of like a part of us was out there with Webb right now. A million miles away, part of our hopes and dreams are out there. So I'm joined now by Jane Rigby, the operations project scientist for the web mission. And she's a familiar face for people who've been following this before. So welcome, Jane. Hi, Michelle. Okay, so Jane, you not only get the honor of revealing the first image, but th this actually got a little bit of a sneak preview. I understand yeah. there was a very select audience who's already seen the image. Yes, so last night uh, on behalf of the project, I had the privilege of traveling to the White House uh, with, the Nelson, with the NASA Administrator Nelson and other senior sh staff to share our first image with President Biden and Vice President Harris. And it, it was really fun. Oh my gosh. Um, we're, uh, they really geeked out. We had a closed door session where we got to walk through all the images and just share the excitement. And they were so thrilled and they got the profundity of what we're seeing. 
And so now we're gonna, we're gonna, let's do it. Okay, we've got the whole world watching. Are you ready to put the first image up? Oh, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, here we go. Ah. <laughs> okay, so the first image is a deep field and it's also a deep field with a cluster. So why don't we walk through this just a little bit? So if we come up and look at this image, first of all, it's really gorgeous yeah. and it's teeming with galaxies. And that's something that has been true for every image we've gotten with Webb. We can't take blank sky. Everywhere we look, there's galaxies everywhere. And so, you know, this, gal this, this image, as we're looking at it, what we're seeing is not just all the galaxies, but there's a cluster here. And so the cluster are all these white kind of ethereal galaxies. We're seeing them as they looked back in time, right? The speed of light is only so fast. And so as we're seeing distant galaxies out in space, we're seeing them as they looked billions of years ago. So these cluster galaxies, the white ones we're seeing as they looked about the time the sun and the earth formed. And then behind the cluster, we have uh, the, 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 the gravity of the cluster is distorting and warping our view of what's behind. And so there are these galaxies that look stretched and pulled, kind of like, like they've been magnified because they've been magnified by the gravity of the cluster, just like Einstein said they would. And you know, it's really, there's so much detail here. We're seeing these galaxies in a way that we've never been able to see before. There's just a sharpness and a clarity we've never had. And so we can look at, if we zoom in on this image and I encourage you as you grab this image at home, like zoom in, it, you can you know, really zoom in and play around. There are galaxies here in which you're seeing individual clusters of stars forming, popping up just like popcorn. Um, and then, we also see in the background of this gallic, of this image kind of littered like jewels all over the back of the image are these faint red galaxies. Now that was what we built the telescope to do. The most distant of those are billions of years. We're seeing as they looked more than 13 billion years ago. And so galaxies like that one right there, this little red guy, you're like, okay, yep. What is that? Well. Webb got spectra to figure out what those galaxies are made of. And this is that one. We're seeing as it looked 13.1 billion years in the past, less than a billion years after the Big Bang. And we're seeing the elements of oxygen and hydrogen as well as neon. You know, this is the kind, this is how the oxygen in our bodies was made in stars, in galaxies. And we're seeing that process get started. I just, I want to give this a little bit of context. So. This is now the farthest away galaxy that we have this sort of detailed information about. That we know what it's made of. We know like what it's that. made of. Yes. And this was not a long exposure for Webb. No, the, 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 pre the previous record holder, right, the Hubble uh, Extreme Deep Field, mm -hmm. was two weeks of continuous work with Hubble. And it was just imaging. With Webb, we took that image before breakfast. The amazing thing about Webb is the speed at which we can churn out discoveries. So everything that you're going to see here in this broadcast is a week and we're going to be doing discoveries like this every week. That is absolutely incredible, Jane. So thank you so much for joining us. It's been an honor to be working with you. Congratulations on all your hard work. Thank you. It's so wonderful <laughs> to see it pay off. So thank you and I'll see you later on today, I hope. So yes. enjoy the day. Thank you. Right. So from distant galaxies, we now turn our eye to something a bit closer. It's a planet, but not one in our solar system. Remember that Earth and its sibling planets aren't the only show in the universe. When scientists and engineers started developing JWST, the search for exoplanets wasn't even part of the plan. That's changed. Exploring exoplanets is now a major component of the mission and the subject of our second big reveal of the day. I'm going to send it now to our friends Natalie Ouellette and Sarah Gallagher at the Canadian Space Agency in Montreal. So again, bonjour. I guess we're, we're, we're having a little. Okay, I'm Nicole Wood, <laughs> and I'm here to tell you. <laughs> Sorry for the brief uh, pause there. We're now going over to Canada. <laughs> okay. Yep, we're all ready. Yeah. 
Okay, I apologize. We're having some trouble with the signal from Canada, but luckily for us, we have an exoplanet expert right here, just in case that happened. So this is Nicole Colon, and she's uh, an exoplanet scientist at NASA, and we're going to talk about this amazing new result from a very hot planet, I understand, about a thousand light years away. That's right. The exoplanet is named Watts 96b, and it is this hot, gaseous, giant, puffy planet that it is about a thousand light years away. So that's why today's release is so exciting because it teases out what we're going to do for such a distance. Absolutely. So talk us through what this discovery is and, and why this is so significant. Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, reveal that you're going to see is going to show the first spectrum of an exoplanet as taken from the Webb telescope. And this is exciting because it covers infrared wavelengths of light that we have not had access to before. So we've been able to use other telescopes to explore exoplanet atmospheres in the infrared, but not to this level of detail. And this is just one sliver of data that Webb is providing us using the nearest instrument specifically. And there's something about um, infrared that is actually particularly good for, for the spectrum. So in this, in this case, what we're doing is we're actually going to take the light and break it up into a rainbow and look very, very carefully at how much color is coming in each, in, in each part of the, the spectrum. So I believe we have that image, if we can put that up. Okay, yes, I, I believe we're revealing the spectrum right here. <laughs> so we now have our spectrum, and this is exactly what you're seeing. As you just described with spectroscopy, what we did was we observed a transit of an exoplanet. We observed the planet as it passed in front of the star. Now, mind you, this is not a direct image. This is an indirect image. So we've seen the effect of what happens when the planet and its atmosphere passes in front of the star. The starlight filters through the atmosphere. And then you can break that down into wavelengths of light. And you get a bunch of what looks like bumps and wiggles to some people, but it's actually full of information content. So you're actually seeing bumps and wiggles that indicate the presence of water vapor in the atmosphere of this exoplanet. So we have the spectrum up here. Is there anything mm -hmm. you'd like to, to highlight particularly? Yeah, absolutely. So we have um, several features marked here. So I call them features. They are these, what I just referred to as bumps and wiggles. But what you're seeing here is a telltale signature, the chemical fingerprint of water vapor in these atmospheres, in the, in the atmosphere of this specific exoplanet. And the other thing we, we can, can tell, tell actually is that there's evidence of- Thank you, Josephine. I appreciate that a lot. That's really nice of you. are not quite as, as large, large as we predicted. So we can take that and infer that there are presence of clouds and hazes. Right. Now, one thing that we really want to make sure people understand is with this particular planet, this is a hot world. It's actually closer to its star than Mercury is to our sun. Mm -hmm. And so we're not looking at liquid water here, but we're, we're looking mm -hmm. instead of, at, at sort of steam, water vapor. Yes, this is a, an exoplanet. It's about the size of Jupiter, about half the mass of Jupiter. It orbits around a sun-like star, but it does it every about three and a half days. Right. So it's extremely hot, extremely close in, nothing like our solar system planets, but that's okay because what we're seeing is again, the first exoplanet data from Webb. And this is just the beginning. We're going to start pushing down to further smaller planets and being able to take measurements just like this with the nearest instrument that um, was built by the Canadian Space Agency. But also there's other three, three other science instruments that will add to our knowledge in the infrared, as well as direct imaging modes along with the transit method. So there's a lot more to come. And I guess one thing we should mention is not only are we going to be looking at planets that are more like the Earth in the future, but we'll also be looking at planets in our own solar system. Absolutely, yes. We're going to have um, exciting data from planets in our solar system, from Mars uh, outward, as well as asteroids and comets. So stay tuned for a lot more to come. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you so much for telling us about the spectrum, and I'll, I'll be seeing you later on today. <laughs> So we have three more big image reveals, and with that, new and more exciting science. But first, let's take a look back at the journey that brought us to this moment. Celebrations like this one are only possible with years of hard work from a cast of thousands. When a new mission is being built, even the most enthusiastic space fans only get to see dramatic moments in this life cycle, the news and images that come out in updates and press releases. But that doesn't really give you the sense of the huge effort that goes on behind the scenes every day. The plan, schedules, and organization to keep everything moving forward really happens, for the most part, out of people's gaze. Webb started as an idea that took root at NASA Goddard. It grew first into planning teams, research projects, schematics, requirements. Then it began the long journey to become real with the development of new technologies, cutting edge engineering, and finally fabrication, putting it all together. Let's take a brief look back at the visionary journey to how we all got here today. 
So today was the final closeout of the purge. Okay, guys, I can hear Rupa, uh, but it's a pretty emotional moment to be in there and actually, you know, closing it up for the very last time, right? You know, you're the last one to touch this. And so that was the final operation. And once that fitting is closed out, um, there's no more touching of the vehicle. We're ready for launch. The James Webb Space Telescope, born from the desires of astronomers, achieved with newly invented technology, is the culmination of 20 years of work. Humanity has unlimited questions about our universe. Engineering a way to investigate them requires enormous creativity. Webb has been a trade-off between engineering performance, the, what the astronomers want, risk. In fact, when we started 20 years ago, we were actually looking at an eight meter telescope. Developing the, the most, most sensitive, sensitive instruments. instruments. And, and testing. Hold on a second. And more, more testing. testing. And so you don't want to build one that's... All right, I'm going to um, mute this for a second because it's just... Like, show us the images already, you know? <laughs> it's so annoying. I hate when people beat around the bush when you're, like, excited for something. It aggravates me. But um, Vedrana... Vedrana... I hope I'm saying that right. Vedrana V <clears throat> says... One more thing that baffles me is that we know more about our universe than our own deep oceans. Exactly. We know more about our universe than we do about the center of our Earth and the oceans. It's crazy, right? You think we'd master our own planet before uh, heading off to other ones, but it is pretty interesting, right? Polarific says the astronaut Buzz Aldrich says there were aliens there to greet them on the moon. <laughs> Who is CERN? This month, CERN was trying to open portals to look for dark matter. I don't know who CERN is, but it sounds like they're a pretty cool person. <laughs> yeah, smash that like button, Sherry. Thank you. I think we never went back to the moon because there were beings there. You know, Poodlerific, I will say this about the moon, right? I think that, okay, there is a, there was a, um, what do you want to call it? Like a, a broadcast of everybody that went to the moon um, on TV live, okay, back in the day. And one thing that the conspiracy theorists say is, look at look at everybody sitting there. Look at the astronauts. They look like they are terrified. They look like they're under a spell. They look like they're scared to talk. They look, they look unhappy. They look they just they looked like they were being controlled or something. That's one of the weird things that sticks out to me is if you do watch that broadcast. It is kind of strange how they're acting. I will say that. Um, that was one of the things about the moon thing that kind of freaked me out. But um, some one of you had said something about the dark side of the moon. Um, yeah, there's structures on the dark side of the moon that are not natural. They look like they're man-made. Um, if you've never checked that out before, you probably should. It's pretty cool. Like, it, even like the, the world's biggest like archaeologists and professionals or whatever look at the shapes, like the way these things are shaped. And they're like, there's no way a natural, you know, natural could natural uh, gravity, whatever time could do this. Like, this is not a natural structure. It looks like it's man-made. Like one of them looks like a freaking uh, skyscraper. Another one looks like a, um, its own um, satellite, a huge satellite. And if it is a satellite, it's like 13 million miles freaking wide or some shit um yes you okay poodlerific you know which one i'm talking about then the live broadcast they're in shock yeah shock that's a good word yep they look like they are in shock you mean you would think you would just get back from the moon you'd be all amped up like yo it was so fun out there yeah, i'd be excited to answer questions they all look like they're under a spell or some shit it's like the weirdest thing um that's that sticks out to me when I think of you know the conspiracy about the moon landing. Oh, here's the L2 Lagrange point thing, guys. I was talking about. Let me put it on so you can hear it. Hold on. You want to avoid the mirror seeing direct sunlight. 
to keep it cold. And it actually had to be quite a long list. We ended up with about 70 targets from which we had to select only a handful. You know, what would create the most beautiful images, what would highlight the instruments, the four different four science instruments for web, and what would highlight the four uh, major science themes for web. And it's a celebration as well of the beginning of science observations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we yeah. knew that selecting the images was just the beginning, that we would need a trained... All right, whatever. Show the freaking images already, will you? <sighs> Hi, Negative. Negative says, I've been waiting for this moment forever. Same, same. Um, I used to deal with all these questions when I used to debunk flat earthers. <laughs> I can't believe there are people out there who really believe the earth is flat. Like, come on, man. Like, that is so stupid on so many different levels. Like, I'm no professional, like, you know, uh, debater. I ain't, I ain't the great debate, you know what I'm saying? But, like, come on. A flat earth, really, really. I cannot believe. And, you know, I have met some intelligent people. <laughs> I don't even know if you want to call them intelligent if they believe in the flat earth. But, like, I've met some pretty highly intelligent people that are convinced the earth's flat. And I'm just like, how? <laughs> How can you believe that? Oh, are they showing a picture? Oh, am I missing it? Oh my God, just saying, just saying says, sorry, I'm in a note. I'm actually pretending to work today. I'm in a shitty, oh, I'm a shitty mod. I thought you said I'm in a shitty mood. <laughs> Here to offset 30%. Oh, thank you, just saying. You you did not have to do that. Thank you. Wow, you're really nice, Justine. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support on ways I can't even tell you. Thank you very much. All right, guys, I think we're missing the photo, so I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> I think this is the photo. It might be anyways. You really are trying to show the different details. No, maybe not. I don't know. They're happening in astronomical images. But at the end of the day, you want it to be very compelling. You want it to be very beautiful because space is beautiful. And after those images were processed, it was a select few of us, very lucky few of us, who got to see the first images. So this is downscale by a factor of four. So, so just to make it a little more and more handy, so it's actually higher resolution. So we have a team of about 30 people who are producing these images, and we feel incredibly privileged to be the ones were the first to see these science-like images. When, when we saw the first data come down of real targets, people were speechless and there were emotions because we immediately we could see how amazing this observatory would be. The detail, the sharpness, the depth. And when we saw the first color images, we knew that we had a winner. And now we are ready to see Webb's first image of a star dying, a planetary nebula called the Southern Rain. Let's do it. Oof. Wow, wow. This, this near infrared image is, wow, the detail. Oh. <laughs> that is beautiful. Wow. Okay. Well, here we are. We have a near infrared image on our left or on maybe your right. <laughs> and here on the right, we have a near infrared image. Um, and so I'm here with Carl, our, our astronomer uh, specialist. Can you tell us what we're looking at in these images? So this is a planetary nebula. It's caused by a dying star that has expelled a large fraction of its mass over in successive waves. Okay. So we actually see those waves in these images. Yes. Um, Wow, wow. And so there's a lot of structure. Can you tell us a little more detail about what we're looking, maybe start with this one on the left? Yeah, so in the, in the near cam image, you see this kind of bubbly, uh, you know, almost foamy appearance throughout the whole nebula with some very structured uh, shells. But the, and this foaminess is showing up in orange mainly. And this is, this is due to the molecular hydrogen that's newly formed in the expansion, uh, just lighting up the gas and dust of this nebula. And then as we move inward, you see this kind of very uh, blue haze in the inner region. And this is actually due to very hot ionized gas that emits well in the blue um, that's heated by the core, the leftover very hot core of this star. 
And what about these like rays that I'm seeing in this image? Right there. So there's also rays in the outer regions that you can kind of see. And these are holes in the inner nebula that are actually allowing the, the central star's light to come out and kind of light it up like, uh, you know, patchy clouds with the sun shining through. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's what it looks like. That's so cool. Um, so you're actually a mid-infrared astronomer, which is different than near-infrared. And so what can you tell us about the details in this mid-infrared image? So this is, it looks quite different in color, um, partly because we're, we're seeing different kinds of physics going on here. So we're actually seeing in the blue, you see a lot of blue. The blue is actually due to hydrocarbon grains that are emitting very strongly in the blue for MIRI. And they show the very similar structures to what we see in orange and near cam because the, the hydrocarbon, the molecular hydrocarbon actually forms on the surface of dust grains. And so again, as we move inward, we, we see that, that the inner region is again hot ionized gas, but now it glows red because that's where it emits longest for the strongest for MIRI wavelengths. Okay. And then as we go into the center, we see kind of the surprise for us, which is we knew this was a binary star, but we, we effectively didn't really see much of, the, of the, the actual star that produced the nebula. But now in MIRI, this star glows red because it has dust around it. So in MIRI, we got to see both stars very clearly. Yeah, yeah, you can't see it in first image really, but there's two stars there. So that's a fun surprise. Um, and I think that there's another little Easter egg you want to tell us about? Yeah, so this was, uh, the Easter egg is this kind of uh, narrow filament up in, the, up in the top that's radially aligned. You can kind of see it very clearly in the MIRI image. It shows up as this blue, blue structure and it points very much to the central sources. So I thought, oh, this must just be a density enhancement in the outer nebula. I thought that very, very strongly, but other people on the team were like, no, it's a background edge on galaxy. Well, I made a bet that said, no, it's part of the nebula. By the way, I lost the bet because then we looked more carefully at both the near cam and mirror images. And it's very clearly an edge on galaxy with a dust lane and a bulge. So I lost the bet. Well, you lost the bet, but you got these gorgeous images. So I think it's a win for everybody. And Anything else you'd like to say today? I can't wait to see where we go from here. Oh, neither can I. All right. Thanks so much. Back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Alex and Carl. And I have to say that image is absolutely spectacular. So as you know, people from all over the world are watching us today and joining in, a, in our excitement as we release for Webb's first science images. We've been checking in with our colleagues in Europe and Canada throughout the program, but we also want to take a moment to include the people at the oh so many viewing parties scattered around the world like stars in the night sky. So let's check in with some of them now. First, we go all the way to Perth, Australia. Do we have a signal from Perth? I guess nothing from Perth oh, right now. Is this going to be a slow? Uh, maybe we have some of our other feeds. We're going to check in with them right now. Is this going to be like a slow ass freaking thing where it takes them 20 minutes per image or whatever? So annoying. <laughs> like, why can't just show us all the images? You know, whatever. Anyways. <clears throat> Dead GPK says, wow, edge of another galaxy, so bright. For real. That fluffy foam, they were calling it like a foam lip stuff, is so pretty. Like, so pretty. I'm just amazed. Of course, they're going to draw it out for a whole hour. Yeah, Irish Badass, I was saying that earlier. I was like, how can people not appreciate this, right? I was saying that a lot of people in this community... <laughs> will notice if Katie Joy plucked the wrong eyebrow hair or something, but they won't, they don't care about the universe and how cool this really is, right? Like yesterday's image, I was kind of like bummed out seeing how disappointed some people were. They were like, oh, big deal, whatever. Like, yo, the image they showed yesterday was so extraordinary that like people, the fact people couldn't appreciate it just like kind of made me mad. I was like, yo, I know y'all were looking for like a colorful freaking nebula picture, but like this is deep space. Like if you had a grain of sand on your fingertip, a grain of sand, and you reached out your arm into the sky, all that would be all that's there. Like that's, I can, my brain can't even comprehend how wild that is. I like can't even fathom it, you know? It is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I'm enjoying the geeky excitement. <laughs> I don't need a play-by-play -play with watch parties, I know. Just show us the images. 
No, really, though, just saying, like, you know it, right? You know it. They'll be noticing everything about that lady. <laughs> Their minds get blown over a new IG filter, I know. I know. Oh, by the way, Stina, um, thank you very much for that gift you sent me. Um, that pillowcase was dope. I, w I wish I had my camera on today and I wasn't looking like a, um, a sewer rat here. I would show you my super cool uh, pillowcase. <laughs> that is so cool. I love it. It's a ac it's actually like a deep space like photo. I love it so much. And um, what was I going to say? Texas Angie sent me um, a galaxy necklace too. It's like a circle and in the inside of it has like a galaxy. And then... Um, Lizzie, is Lizzie Stardust here? I haven't seen Lizzie, but Lizzie sent me a notebook that's a galaxy. You guys are just, the stuff I've been sent lately, man, I'm just so humbled by, like, like you guys know exactly, you know, all about my love of the universe, for sure. Oh, Diane, you, you have a broken ankle? Ow. My mom fell down the stairs a couple weeks ago and broke her ankle. I had to rush her to the hospital. It was horrible. She fell down. <laughs> she was trying to avoid a little tiny rock, and she ended up falling and broke her ankle and her arm. So I have to, like, put her hair up for her and um, help her out. Poor, poor lady's had a rough year. Thanks, Dina. It's so pretty. Even my daughter loves it. <laughs> she tries to steal it from me. I'm like, this is mine. But every time I, I put my head on the pillow, I think of Stina Marie. <laughs> Christina's like, all right, that's getting kind of creepy now. All right, what are these people clapping for? Oh. Anyways, I just... Yeah, she's all right, Lucy. She's all right. I've never broken a bone before, you guys. Yeah, my mom has had pretty bad luck. You are out of this world, t Spiracy. Thanks, Dina. <laughs> so pretty. I love it. Yeah, I broke it in May, just preparing for a nap. <laughs> oh. oh, man. You know what? I have fallen up the stairs more times than I've fallen down the stairs, and my mom was going up the stairs, too, actually, when she fell. <laughs> Deborah, you like this stream? Thanks for being here, man. I know that this ain't for everybody, but the realest of the real is here. I know you guys... If you have an imagination, if you can appreciate this stuff, I'm just glad you're here because I knew that this was going to be a small stream because that, that just speaks to, you know, people around here, they want to be entertained with drama and stuff. And this is just the coolest of the coolest, coolest stuff, man. I can't, not only are the pictures amazing, right? Like, um, I think it was Dead GPK said, like, I can't wait to see what we learn not only what we what we're gonna see right that's the cool part but what we learn and how many things are out there that we didn't know about you know and another cool thing about this telescope you guys is that you know because it runs in infrared they'll be able to see like what elements exist on other planets like to see if uh you know it'd be suitable for any kind of living like they can tell by the colors it emits that you know it would have the ingredients essential for life to exist on. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, they'll be able to tell if life is viable, is what I'm trying to say, on whatever they're looking at. So that will open the door to learn a lot, too. You know? Pretty cool. I've been so excited about this telescope that, like, I remember when they were launching it and stuff, I was like, please don't break, please don't break. Because think about it. $10 billion, right? 30 years. They used real gold, by the way, on the mirrors. It's just, it's an extraordinarily, extraordinary piece of uh, equipment, and so many things can go wrong, right? So, oh, is this a new picture? Hold on. Let me shut up for a minute. Ooh, you guys, look at that. We're looking at, yes, like you said, quintet. So, we are looking at five galaxies. Galaxies are. Uh, 
this giant structure that as we've seen, we see everywhere around us in the universe, they contain from million to hundred billions of stars. And in fact, we live in one of them, the Milky Way. And here we see uh, five of them. This is a, a closer um, a galaxy uh, in the foreground. And these four are uh, at a distance of about uh, uh, 300 uh, uh, million light years from us. And they're locked in a close interaction, a sort of cosmic dance driven by the gravitational force. Um, you can see here these two uh, in a process of merging uh, within each other. This is a very important image uh, and an area to study because it really shows uh, the type of interaction that drives the evolution of galaxies. That, that, uh, that's the mechanism of galaxies' growth. I love this image of the cosmic dance <laughs> moving through each other. Uh, Mark, there's a lot going on though in this image, isn't there? There is. So this is a near-infrared image and a mid-infrared infrared image combined. And when we zoom in on the uh, left-hand side here, we see this foreground galaxy. We see lots of individual stars in there actually resolved as point sources, which is remarkable. And then as we pan across, we actually see the, the galaxies in the, the merging galaxies. We now see gas and dust, which is being heated up in the collision between those galaxies. And that's a place where new stars are being born today. So we're actually seeing the process of creation of new stars in this region. And then when we look in the background here, we see not only the galaxies at 300 million light years, but also stars in our own galaxy, these um, snowflake uh, structures that you see here, those are nearby stars, but in the corner and around the edges, we see galaxies which are much, much more distant, much further away. So similar in some sense to the ones that we saw earlier on in that deep field. And so this image actually takes us from the nearby galaxy, our own Milky Way, through these galaxies which are evolving today all the way to the distant universe. And it, in a way, it captures cosmic evolution of galaxies over those 13.8 billion years. So we have another image, don't we, that we can exactly. look at? Exactly. So, so if we strip away the near-infrared view there of the stars predominantly now in the mid-infrared with MIRI alone, we see mostly gas and dust. So we've seen the same galaxies again, the two merging. And then we also see something very interesting up at the top here because this top galaxy has something new and bright in the middle of it. And Giovanna, tell us what that is. Yeah, that's uh, an active black hole. We cannot see the black hole itself, but we see the material swirling around, being swallowed by these sort of cosmic monsters, and gets uh, this gas gets heated to extremely high temperature as it falls onto the black hole, and it becomes very bright. In fact, this is our shine, it's the galaxy here. We see uh, luminosity that are 40 billion times the luminosity of our suns. It's really, really bright. And uh, with near spec, we can zoom into this area, and we have this technology that allows us to take uh, uh, thousands of images at different wavelength channels, uh, so see the, uh, the, the this distribution of the gas, what's going on in the gas uh, in different region uh, of, the, of this core area, and understand the, the composition of the gas, the velocities, um, the temperature, so that's important very important to understand the physics. So it's, it's okay. giving us so much information and it just shows the power of this telescope. Mark, okay. this is just the beginning though, isn't it? I think that's a very important takeaway from today. You know, we these are like pictures just taken over a period of five days and every five days we're getting more data which will contribute more in that in that direction. It's a culmination of decades of work, but it's just the beginning of decades. And you know, what we've seen today with these images is essentially that we're ready now. This telescope is working fantastically well. And, you know, to, to, to borrow a phrase from a famous rock musician, you know, we're ready to turn this telescope up to 11. It really is time. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, both of you. Back to you, Michelle. Thanks, Katie. It is so great to have you and your colleagues with us on this historic day. So before we get to the fifth and final image reveal of the day, it cannot be said enough that an achievement like the James Webb Space Telescope is something bigger than any one of us. It's bigger than any organization, any country. This truly takes a planet. Webb belongs to all of us. And starting today, the discoveries start and they're not gonna stop. This is just the beginning. We've said several times throughout the broadcast that the Webb mission is about people. And during the construction of the Great Telescope, people started to see themselves in it, literally. Day after day, people visited the observation window at NASA Goddard. And looking through the glass, they snapped selfies of themselves reflected in the gigantic golden mirror. 
These photos are actual reflections of the enormous human investment and the emotional commitment that brought this mission to life. And now, years later, that mission is finally collecting light from the earliest days of the universe, all the way to worlds in our own solar system. It's the same mirror that reflected the many faces who see themselves as part of the journey to understand our shared origins. Let's stop for a moment and appreciate the people behind Webb. Okay, it's time now for the last image to be revealed. Here we go. So Amber Strawn is Webb's deputy project scientist. She's here with me today to share the final big reveal of the day. So Amber, it is so good to see you. How are you feeling? Oh, so great, so exciting. What a, what a great day this is. Yeah, so one of the things that we're gonna do is before we get to the final image, the James Webb Space Telescope has taken us all over the universe today. So let's do a quick review of where we've been so far. So Jane Rigby got us rolling today with an extraordinary new deep field image, showing us one of the farthest views of the universe ever. Yeah, this image really does demonstrate that JWST can do exactly what we've designed it to do. Yes. And uh, the Canadian Space Agency then took us to the massive planet WASP-96b, where the team has detected evidence of atmospheric water. And here again, we're seeing the incredible efficiency of this observatory. We're able to do these kind of measurements in a fraction of the time that we are, were able to before. And then we zipped up the road from NASA Goddard to the Space Telescope Science Institute, where Alex and Carl showed us the exquisite Southern Ring Nebula, a mixing bowl of stellar matter around a pair of dying stars. Yeah, and I'm just blown away by the level of detail we can see like in the outer part of, of this nebula. It's incredible. Wow. Okay. After that, it was off to Germany where the European Space Agency wowed us with pictures of galaxies interacting and mixing together. Right, and this image, again, it's just, it's incredible because it's showing us one of these fundamental processes of the universe, how galaxies merge together. And we're able to learn about these processes in a brand new way. <laughs> so the web team has a lot to cheer about right now. So across the campus, there's this- big Thank you, Lucy, appreciate your sticker. All the way from over here. So let's join that celebration now. We're back with senior project scientist, John Mather, along with the head of NASA science mission director, Thomas Zerbuchen. Hello. Hey. So, uh, John, we looked around the world and we're the only ones with a cheerleading crew right over there. This is amazing. Uh, look, uh, you've been with this mission for decades. Uh, how do you feel today? I am so thrilled and so relieved. This was so hard and we took, it took so long. Um, it's just impossible to convey how hard it really was. That uh, We risked so much to say we're going to go do this and it's so near impossible, but we did it. Yeah, there are thousands way, thousands of ways this can go wrong. Yes. Uh, many of them, uh, you know, we worried about and, and frankly feared even after launch. I have to tell you, I was really, really nervous. And, you know, it's almost like athletics for me. You always get to know the team when they're on the field. And on the field, they were right after this launch and they were perfect. They absolutely were. And I really wasn't worried, but maybe I should have been. Yeah, that's that's difference between the two of us. I always worry. I always tell everybody I'm paid to worry, uh, frankly, uh, and, and and that's good. Uh, what we want to do, though, is, you know, just really thank the team again. You know, of course, we heard uh, Bill and Scott and uh, Greg talking about the team that is there. I think what's also important is to recognize that Bernie is sitting there. It was the first uh, manager. I was sitting there. Could you stand up? And... Uh, and I want to mention that Phil Sablehouse, who is a manager uh, also during a time, is no longer with All us, right. but uh, his heart is Okay, let me shut them off. Yeah, I don't really want to watch them pat themselves on the back, even though it's an amazing uh, feat that they accomplished for sure. Uh, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here, what I've been doing while I've been quiet over here is finding the images so I can just put them on the screen, you know. I was getting annoyed, like, you know, they talk up these images and we're all excited for it and then they 
put them on their screen in their studio and have the people stand around while they while they talk. It's like, can you just leave it on the screen? How about that? You know what I mean? That way we can see them. Freaking NASA needs to get their uh, live uh, lives together. Their live streams. I mean, not their not their actual lives. <laughs> so here's one of the images. Let me um take. This. Thank you, Lucy. By the way. <clears throat> so here's one. I think that this one is absolutely beautiful. I wish there was a way. Let's see full width. Let's do that. I'm on the NASA website right now. That is so cool. Like looking at the the swirls inside of each of these just blows my mind. Right? Look how different all three of them are too. That one looks like it's on fire, doesn't that? Don't those look like flames right here? We on fire up in here. It's burning hot. We on fire. All right, so that's one. Let's see. Let's put it on medium. This one was pretty, too. Why does it keep bringing me a flicker? What the heck? All right. This one. Beautiful. That's so cool. Oh, is that the old one? That's the old one. This is the new one. So just to compare the two, right? This is the new one. And then I think this is the one from the Hubble. So just to give you an idea of how advanced this new telescope is. So that's the old one. This is the new one. That's crazy. This resembles an eyeball. So, so, I mean, like, look at it. You know how when you stare into an eyeball, like, you see all these little, you know, web-like, uh, foamy-looking things? Like, it's so crazy how it's just like an eyeball to me. I don't know. I love this photo, though. so cool it is hard to comprehend isn't it her majesty it is it absolutely is let's see what else we have here mm. like let's just look at this one one more time Come on. So cool. I'm upset. You know what? I think Saturn is a beautiful planet. I hope that there's more planets out there that look like Saturn. I absolutely love the rings on Saturn. It's always like fascinated me. I love the rings on it. I hope there's more planets out there like that. All right, here's the other stuff they showed the before and after. Where are the regular images? NASA needs to get their display stuff in order here. <laughs> How are you going to be NASA and not have it all organized? <laughs> Anyways. Well, guys, I think this is so cool. So uh, prior to this, I had told you guys, yeah, the foamy eyeball stuff, Stina. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's so cool. <gasps> yes, Stacy, Orion's. Orion's belt. Yep. It looks like the inside of the cat's collar thing on Men in Black. <laughs> yep. So uh, before this started, I was talking about um, how I saw a UFO and a couple of you wanted me to like finish the story or tell the story when um, these images were starting to get shown. So I kind of like couldn't because I wanted to watch live. So anyways, let me tell you about it real quick. I have talked about it. Um, I had a, I still have a video up about I had a really cool live stream one time, and I had a lot of you um, have the opportunity to call in and tell your stories with any kind of, you know, extraterrestrial experiences you may have had, or anytime you saw something unexplainable, and it was one of my favorite streams ever that we did. Um, 
And when I did that, I had told the story about why I'm so interested in stuff like this. And it all goes back to like 1994, right? So this story is cool, not not just because of like what I saw and experienced, but it's cool because somebody that I don't even know who led a completely different life saw what I saw. And I'll get to that in the end. So it, it further confirmed that I'm, you know, me and my family are not crazy. Well, we are, but you know what I'm trying to say. So... In 1994, I was in fourth grade, and at school, everybody was talking about how there was going to be, like, a shooting stars that night, or it was some, I wish I could remember exactly what it was. It was, there were comets, I don't know, whatever it was, everybody was talking about it in school, like, oh, yeah, you know, after this time at night, after, I think it was, like, after nine o'clock, you can see comets, or see this, or see that, so everybody was getting all amped up to watch, right? So I remember like asking my parents if I could stay up past my bedtime on a, I believe it was a school night, and uh, you know, so I could see these shooting stars or whatever. So they said yeah, and at the time, my cousin, his name's Jared. He lived behind me. He's um a couple of years younger than me, and so he came. I came. My mom came. My aunt came. And I believe my cousin, uh, a girl cousin, was there too. She didn't follow us out to the backyard for the second half of it, I don't think. But she was there for the beginning half of it. And she remembers it too. So we all have, like, the same memory about this thing, right? So um, you stand on the deck just staring at the sky, like, you know, looking for shooting stars or whatever it was that we were looking for. I believe it was shooting stars. So we're looking up and we see, like, a yellow light coming towards us. And it would... It would move left really quick and it would move right really quick and it was completely silent just like you hear on tv like legit the thing moved in ways that would you just can't the fact it had no engine noise like it was really really weird right so it would zoom out zoom in and it was just unbelievable and then it would it would just like disappear and at one point it went behind our house like into the woods like in the backyard and the strangest thing about it all was, even though we were all terrified, <laughs> we were super, like, fascinated by it at the same time, right? And my mother, who still to this day swears she was under some kind of hypnosis, <laughs> she was like, go get your coat. It, it was almost went without speaking. Like, like it was almost like we all knew we were going to run out to the backyard and, and look for it again, right? So she told me, go get my go get my coat, right, in the house. So I run in the house, I get my coat, I put it on, we all start heading to the backyard, into the woods to, you know, to chase the thing, which is so strange because we were terrified, right? So we go back out there, it, we, we didn't see it at first, and all of a sudden it came zooming down, like warp speed, right towards us, and I screamed because I was scared. I thought it was going to crash into us, and my mom covered my mouth. Yeah, meteor storm, yeah, something like that, sure, Ma. So I'm... Um, my mother covered my mouth when I screamed, <laughs> and it was pretty intense. I, I was terrified, probably more terrified than I've ever been in my entire life. So um, we started walking back. My aunt and my cousin, their house was behind mine, so they were home first. We said bye, and then me and my mom went in the house. It's like almost like none of us like really talked. It was just like we were so so in shock that we didn't even have like words to like be like, what the hell? We were like, whoa, that was crazy. Like I think we said it like a few times, like. We're just like, wow, that was nuts, right? It was like a yellowy, orange, like more like a yellow color light, right? So just the fact it made no noise was just wild. Um, so anyways, we come in the house. My mother tells me to go to bed. Like I said in the beginning, I was laying there. We had just moved my room around, so my bed was right in front of the window. And I had been watching scary shows all along, like Unsolved Mysteries and, and like Stacy said, The Sighting Show. And I was reading Goosebump books about ufos like so i knew <laughs> about that stuff right and i remember laying in front of my window on my bed being scared to move inside my bed just sweating like yo if i move they're gonna know i'm in here i know too much we weren't supposed to see that like they're gonna come back for us <laughs> i was convinced so convinced right so as i'm laying there i could hear my parent my mom telling my dad out in the living room like yo we saw some crazy stuff we saw a ufo she's telling him like everything that happened right and my dad by the tone of his voice and the way he was he was just like yeah sure that's what i was gathering from it. i didn't i don't remember like what exactly he was saying back to her but he basically didn't believe us kind of and i remember being so scared and terrified thinking like yo you need to listen mofo because when we go missing you need to know where to look as if he could come save us you know in outer space or whatever but yeah, it's, it's a traumatic experience and it stuck with me. So when I did that stream, I was just telling you about where I told this story. 
I said, uh, you know, that's where I met my alien friend in 1994. And then that is how, for those of you who don't know, that is how Leon was born. <laughs> so Leon is a staple around here. Everybody knows who Leon is. Leon is awesome. Here's Leon right here. You know, we all know Leon, right? So Leon became like, you know, I don't even want to say a joke because I don't I don't want to disrespect the Leon, but uh, these are Leon's uncles. They're a whole nother story, but uh, here's Leon, you know, welcome Earthlings. So yeah, that is where, if you don't know, and you've always wondered where Leon came from, Leon was in the craft in 1994. So so that's the Leon story. <laughs> so here's, the, here's a really cool part about the story, right? So for years, me and my family members, we would talk about it. We would, we would laugh about how nobody believed us and how we were crazy and blah, blah, blah. And um, a couple of years ago, I started to like get even more interested in all this stuff. And I started thinking about it more and more. So I went online, okay? And I found a website that takes reports of unidentified flying objects, right? You, you can write the date. You can write your location. You can fill out whatever you want. You can even leave a description about what you experienced, things like that. So... Um, I found this website. I have it linked in the original video I did, the stream I did. I'll have to link it in this one after so you guys can check it out. Um, so so I found this website where you could report it. So I started thinking to myself, like, gee, I wonder if anybody from my area around that time ever reported anything. So I started digging, digging, digging. Now, I didn't know the exact date. I just knew that it was, like, fall time because it was, like, the beginning of the school year, I remember. You know, it's hard to go back to 1994, <laughs> especially when you were a child, right? So... I'm like, it took me a long time. Anyways, I figured it out, give or take, and I found this something that, like, talk about synchronicity, man. I still can't believe this exists. But there's a dude who lived literally down the street from me who made a report. Um, he explained the same thing that we experienced, right? And then he explained how he was also... Uh, um, a respected individual. He, I can't remember if he was either a cop or um, a firefighter. He, anyways, he was somebody, you know, trustworthy in the community or whatever. And he explained exactly what we saw. And he lives down near the stop sign, grew up down the street, right? It's crazy. And we've never interacted with him or talked to him or anything, but just to know that somebody that wasn't us saw it, knew it was unexplainable and reported it on a website, like, was crazy like I still can't even believe like I found it that he made the report that he experienced it like we did it's wild right so yeah that website is pretty cool um you can put in dates times places or whatever like you don't even have to be specific you can just put in your city and then you can see all the reports people have made um so yeah it's pretty cool um yeah so I know no matter what anybody tells me no matter what I know what I saw was unexplainable and yeah, that's my Leon story. Oh, Leon's ex is here. Hey, <laughs> Leon's ex says, Ooh, Leon is swamped at work. Heard the topic. Sorry, I'm late. Dang static in the universe today. Couldn't get the translator working. <laughs> Leon's ex, you know, I heard that, that NASA was having trouble communicating with Canada. So, I mean, I can see why you, you couldn't get the translator. What kind of day, right? <laughs> uh interesting but anyways um guys thanks for coming here i know that this isn't normally stuff we normally talk about so i'm i'm excited that a few of you are intrigued enough to come to have come and hang out with me for a little bit while we look at this stuff i think it's super cool i'm glad that some of you think it's super cool um and if you don't think that this is super cool you get your head checked because this is unbelievable i mean just look at this dude let me make me this one Just take one more look at this photo. This is just crazy. Look at that. The spirals around that. So interesting. Anyways, can't wait to see what we learn from this. Hey, Odin. What's going on? But thanks for coming, guys. I appreciate you, uh, you know, checking this out with me. So hopefully if there's any other new cool stuff that James Webb does, I don't care if, I don't care if three of you show up. I'll probably still do it because this is so 
amazing to me, you know. But smash that like on the way out. Um, thanks for your support. And if you have any stories you want to tell me about your experience, you know, just leave it in the comments. I love hearing people's stories. Like I said, I'll link that video um, that I did before where people call in. Sherry had a cool story. So many of you did. Um, even Julie called in. Julie told more of a ghost story, but that was cool. So if you're interested in looking for something to watch, you've never seen it, um, I'll link that right when I get off here, guys. So uh, thanks again for showing up. Thanks to my moderators. And yeah, we'll see you guys again soon, okay? Okay, bye.